Welcome to ASFOB Tutoring. In this video we will go over 15 aviation information questions for the AFOQT test. To practice more, download the AFOQT tutoring from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Question 1. What happens if the wing flaps in the down position? A. Only the lift was increased. B. Increased lift and drag. C. Increased drag and decreased lift. D. Decreased lift and drag. The answer is B. When wing flaps are extended downward, they increase the curvature of the wing, which enhances the wing's lift by allowing it to deflect more air downward. However, this also increases drag, as the flaps create additional surface area and disrupt the airflow more, causing more resistance. This is especially useful during takeoff and landing when low speed lift is critical. Question 2. The flaps are located in A. Behind of both wings B. On the rudder C. Behind of elevators D. Behind of stabilizers The answer is A. Flaps are located on the trailing edge of both wings, near the wing roots. They are hinged surfaces that can be extended downward to increase lift and drag, which is particularly useful during takeoff and landing to allow for lower speed flight while maintaining sufficient lift. Question 3. What are the most important factors in aircraft construction? A. Strength, weight, and reliability. B. Lightness and strength. C. Maneuverability and speed. D. Speed, strength, and weight. The answer is D. In aircraft construction, these factors are critical. Speed is important for efficiency and performance. Strength is necessary to withstand aerodynamic forces and structural stress. Weight is crucial because lighter aircraft can achieve better performance, fuel efficiency, and maneuverability. Balancing these factors is essential to designing an effective and reliable aircraft. Question 4. Why do municipal airports often have at least one extended or unusually long runway? A. To facilitate the takeoff in a crosswind. B. To facilitate the takeoff of aircraft with higher than average climbing speeds. C. To facilitate the takeoff of heavily loaded aircraft in calm conditions. D. To facilitate the takeoff of multiple aircraft at a time. The answer is C. Heavily loaded aircraft require more runway length to reach the necessary takeoff speed, especially in calm conditions where there is little or no headwind to assist in generating lift. Extended runways provide the extra distance needed for these aircraft to safely accelerate and become airborne. Question 5. Which one of the following are small airfoils recessed into the trailing edges of the primary control surface? A. Stabilator. B. Aileron. C. Elevon. D. Trim tabs. The answer is D. Trim tabs are small, adjustable airfoils located on the trailing edges of primary control surfaces such as the ailerons, elevators, or rudder. They are used to fine-tune and stabilize the aircraft's flight attitude without constant input from the pilot, reducing control forces and allowing for more comfortable and efficient flight. Question 6. What is the purpose of trim tabs? A. To maneuver the aircraft. B. To reduce landing speed. C. To maintain aircraft balance. D. To move the primary control surfaces. The answer is C. Trim tabs are used to adjust and maintain the aircraft's balance and stability during flight. By setting trim tabs, pilots can neutralize control forces, allowing the aircraft to maintain a steady flight path without requiring constant manual adjustments. This helps reduce pilot workload and ensures smoother, more stable flight. Question 7. The name of a rearward, retarding force caused by disruption of airflow by the wing, rotor, and fuselage is A. Weight B. Drag C. Lift D. Thrust The answer is B. Drag is the rearward, retarding force caused by the disruption of airflow around the aircraft's surfaces, including the wings, rotor, and fuselage. It opposes the forward motion of the aircraft and must be overcome by thrust to maintain speed and flight. 
Drag increases with the aircraft's speed and is a key factor in determining an aircraft's performance and fuel efficiency. Question 8. Which of the following forces is not acting on a flying object? A. Weight. B. Lift. C. Drag. D. Normal reaction. The answer is D. A normal reaction force is the perpendicular force exerted by a surface to support the weight of an object resting on it. Since a flying object is not in contact with a surface, it does not experience a normal reaction force. Instead, it experiences weight, due to gravity, lift, opposing gravity, and drag, opposing forward motion. Question 9. As a general rule, drag opposes which force and acts rearward parallel to the relative wind? A. Laminar airflow. B. Lift. C. Weight. D. Thrust. The answer is D. Drag is the aerodynamic force that opposes thrust and acts rearward, parallel to the relative wind. Thrust is the forward force produced by the aircraft's engines or propellers that propels the aircraft through the air. Drag resists this forward motion, and overcoming it is essential for maintaining or increasing the aircraft's speed. Question 10. At night, what color is the omnidirectional taxiway lights that outline the edges of the taxiway? A. Blue. B. Red. C. Green. D. Yellow. The answer is A. At night, the edges of taxiways are outlined with omnidirectional blue lights. These lights help pilots navigate the taxiways safely during low visibility conditions, such as at night or in poor weather. The blue lights are specifically used to differentiate taxiways from runways, which are typically outlined with different colors of lights. Question 11. All stresses imposed on the aircraft wings are transmitted to which area? A. The fuselage structure. B. The outer layer or shield of the wings. C. The surrounding atmosphere. D. The stress releaser plugs. The answer is A. All stresses imposed on the aircraft wings, including aerodynamic forces and loads, are transmitted to the fuselage structure. The fuselage is designed to absorb and distribute these stresses throughout the aircraft, ensuring structural integrity and stability. This load distribution is critical for maintaining the overall strength and safety of the aircraft. Question 12. A ramjet engine consists of a. An inlet, a turbine, a compressor, a compression chamber, and a nozzle. b. A compressor, an intake, a combustion chamber, and an outlet. c. An inlet, a combustion zone, and a nozzle. D. An inlet, a compression chamber, a turbine, and a nozzle. The answer is C. A ramjet engine operates by compressing incoming air through its inlet, mixing it with fuel in the combustion zone, and then expelling the high-speed exhaust through the nozzle to produce thrust. Unlike other jet engines, a ramjet does not have moving parts like turbines or compressors, it relies on the high speed of the incoming air for compression. Question 13. For a fixed-wing aircraft, the acting direction of lift is a. Parallel to the direction of flight b. 160 degrees to the direction of flight c. Perpendicular to the direction of flight d. 45 degrees to the direction of flight The answer is c. For a fixed-wing aircraft, lift acts perpendicular to the direction of the relative airflow over the wings. This perpendicular force counteracts the aircraft's weight and is essential for maintaining flight. The direction of lift is crucial for achieving and sustaining the necessary aerodynamic balance and performance of the aircraft. Question 14. What is the angle at which the cord of an aircraft's wing meets the relative wind? A. The angle of attack. B. The critical angle. C. The angle of pitch. D the angle of deep? The answer is A. The angle of attack is the angle between the cord line of an aircraft's wing and the direction of the relative wind, or airflow. This angle is crucial in determining the amount of lift generated by the wing and affects the aircraft's aerodynamic performance. Adjusting the angle of attack can influence lift, 
drag, and overall flight characteristics. Question 15. A pitot tube is widely used by aircraft pilots. A. To determine the airspeed of an aircraft. B. To determine the altitude. C. To determine the direction of the aircraft. D. To determine the angle of attack. The answer is A. A pitot tube measures the dynamic pressure of the air flowing into it, which is used to calculate the aircraft's airspeed. It works in conjunction with a static port to provide accurate airspeed readings by comparing the dynamic pressure with the static pressure. This information is crucial for safe and effective flight operations. To practice more, download the AFOQT tutoring from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.